Hey, Math 43, I had a question coming out of chapter 3, number 82, and here's where we were playing roulette. And if you're not sure how to play roulette, I'm going to remind you, go watch. There's a video called Counting on uh, the Canvas page, and go check it out. I go over a bunch of games, roulette being one of them. So the first question in 82, part A just says, hey, what are the 38 possible outcomes in the sample space. And if you were to actually play roulette, this is a legit roulette table here, and there's a legit roulette wheel right here. And basically they drop a ball and the, the, the roulette wheel spins and then the ball lands somewhere. And it can land on any of these 36 numbers in zero and double zero. And that's where they're getting these 38 outcomes. So the 36 numbers here and then 37 and 38, and that's our sample space which will ultimately become our denominator in a bunch of problems because our denominator in your basic probability questions is always the number of outcomes in your sample space. So the first thing says, hey, what's the probability that uh, you, you get a red if you bet on red? Well, you could go through and count all the reds. There's one, two, three, four, five. You could keep on going through here, or really you could just know it's half of 36. So that's why you see up here, there are 18 reds out of my sample space of 38. So you have about a 47% chance of getting a red. And that's why, like, if you were to put your chip, if you were going to bet on red and black, there's still a 2 out of 38 chance that you're going to lose because 0 and double 0 can pop up. Right? Anytime this probability is less than 50%, uh, it's, it's favoring the house. And BT dubs, every game favors the house. Again, you don't want to play at a casino, you want to own one. All right, the next question says, what if you bet on a dozen? And you can see, and I'll get the highlighter here, you can see here's the first dozen, right? Second dozen, third dozen. And what that says, and let me erase my last two marks. Let's say I bet on the first dozen. What that's saying, let me erase, I can see all my little red marks in here. So what's that, ugh, what that is saying is that if any of the numbers, and let me draw my little rectangle here, if any of these numbers pop up, then I get paid. Right? And there are quite literally 12 out of the 38, and that's where that probability is coming from. And then part D says, what's the probability that um, you'd win if you bet on an even number? Well, if we bet on evens, again, we can go through and count the number of evens. Right? One, two, three, four. And you're going to find out that once we get to 36, there are 18 evens right, out of 38. And you might be saying, well, what about zero and double zero? Those aren't considered even or odd. They're just extra in the game of roulette to throw your odds off of winning. And then part E says, is, is getting an odd number the complement of getting an even number? And this idea of complement, if, if two events are complementary, then the probability of getting an odd plus the probability of getting an even would equal one. That's what it means to be complementary. Now I'm gonna put a little, you can't quite see it. I, I wanted to put a little question mark over that. Let me do it in a different color just so I can distinguish it. Right? I don't know if this is true, but that's, oops, excuse me. That's what it means to be complementary, that two events, their probabilities would sum to one. So let's figure out what is the probability of odd plus even. I'm going to erase everything we have in here. Oops, excuse me. Let me erase it for reals now. All right, let's go back here and let's work this. So what is the probability of getting an odd plus the probability of getting an even. And we're gonna see, again, is this thing equal to one? Well, we just said for the evens, right, we calculated it right here, it was 18 out of 38. And I'll tell you, if you count odds, it is also 18 out of 38. And 18 out of 38 is only 36 possibilities out of 38. And the reason you're missing two is because you still have zero and double zero. So again, if you put a chip on even and odd, you're not even guaranteed to win because if zero and double zero pop up, you lose. So are these two things complementary events? Well, they add up to 36 out of 38, which is not equal to one. So the answer is no, they are not complements of each other. And that's algebraically how we're proving that. And then F says, come up with two mutually exclusive events. And again, I'm going to erase all of this stuff because it gets real crowded up in here. Now, mutually exclusive events just mean two events that can't happen at the same time. So when you hear me say mutually exclusive, Right, that means events can't happen at the same time. And so let me give you a for instance. Let's call event A um, that the 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 wheel. Oops. Ah, uh -uh, let me write wheel, or I should say ball lands on. I'll do ball lands on seven. 
and I'll have event B be that the ball lands on, let's just come up with a number I'm looking at, 31. All right, so we have respectively, we've got seven and we've got 31, right? And then what's the outcome? What's the likelihood or how can I do A and B, right? And if I think about A and B, can I get a ball to land on the seven and the 31 at the same time? So if I drop the ball in here and spin the wheel, it can't do both of these things at the same time. They have no outcomes in common. And so those are examples of mutually exclusive events and there's tons of them, right? So I actually wrote uh, quite a few out here, right? I said, hey, black and red, right? You can't get a black and a red number at the same time. And again, I'm using the phrase and, right? The overlap, right? Do things overlap? Well, getting the first dozen and the second dozen at the same time, that can't happen. Getting the number two and the number five at the same time, it can't happen. And then you might even be thinking, well, what are examples now of non or of not mutually exclusive events? So uh, an example of a non-disjoint event right, is a number in the first uh, dozen and getting an even number because there is overlap, right? All of these numbers here, they are in the first dozen and on top of that, they're even, all right? So the last thing we have is, are these events even and first dozen independent? So again, I'm gonna erase everything we have up here because this gets real crowded when we work all of these formulas, oops. There we go, so oops, not quite. Let me get these guys too. So now we have our even and first dozen independent. And we have a couple of formulas to figure out independence. And the one I'm gonna go with here, I can think of is the and. So I'm gonna say is the problem of even and first dozen equal to the probability that my roll was even times the probability that my roll landed in the first dozen. All right, and if, oops, I guess, ah, I can't quite, let me squish this a bit and write that parentheses. So I, I, what I need to do is figure out those three probabilities. And when I say three, I need this one, one, two, and three. And then I need to determine if equality holds. And that's what you see me going and doing here. So when I think about even and first 12, we just said, hey, here are the numbers that are even and in the first dozen. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And that's why you see me doing six out of 38. And we already calculated the probability of an even, it was 18 out of 38. We also calculated the probability that a, a, a ball would land in the first dozen. There was 12 out of 38 there, right? And then I have 0.474 and 0.316 here. And then you can see, these two numbers, they are not equal. So the answer to this is no, they are not independent. And on the flip of that, even though this wasn't equal, but let's say we had gotten something like 0.158 and that was equal to 0.158, then you would have just told me they were independent. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.